we are so focused. We like to do one thing and really do it well. And we are so focused on the old post office site and really making it a beautiful home run. And I have to tell you this. Uh, you know, you read all about GSA and uh, everything. I, I have dealt over the years with many, many people. I guess sort of everybody in the real estate business. I have rarely met people more professional than the people at GSA. We are dealing with them now. They are so, they just want this project to be great. And it's so important to them. And you know, you hear about government and you hear about government representatives and all. These people are as good as anybody I've ever dealt with. And I don't say that even at a positive standpoint because they negotiate a very tough deal. But they are real professionals that want this to be a great job. I think that's why they chose us. There were other bidders who were saying things like, how could they give it to Trump? He's gone bankrupt before. I never went bankrupt, Doc. Uh, over the course of years and years, and you could look at Henry Kravis and Carl Icahn and many, many, you do things. I, I buy a lot of things out of bankruptcy. I bought a house in Palm Beach out of bankruptcy for $40 million. I sold it for $100 million after fixing it. So I when do, you, no, when no, you, no, excuse me. Go ahead. The, the laws of the country have things where you're allowed to chapter a company. And out of hundreds and hundreds of deals that I've done over the years, uh, three or four deals, I've used that along with Carl Icahn has used it, Henry Kravis has used it, uh, I think Warren Buffett has used it. I saw a deal where it went bankrupt. Uh, other people have used it. There are many, many of the biggest people, almost all of them, have used the bankruptcy laws of this country including to their advantage. Of, including all of the competitors, incidentally, who are saying that. But, you know, I think what's important is the GSA asked to see the financial statements of all of the companies who submitted. So there wasn't ambiguity. You know, they, could, they were going to make sure that whoever was selected had the wherewithal to execute on the project as they should have done. You've been called the rarest heiress, right? Because you work so much. I've not heard that. I like that. Um, <laughs> because you work a lot. She I mean, does. you're, you're the daughter of uh, someone who has billions. How many billions do you have? What do they say? Yeah. Nine. No, Is, they, Forbes said 3.2. I know. Well, <laughs> I say nine. It's a big difference. I say nine, but that's OK. OK, a lot of money. No, okay, I don't so know. Let, Whatever <laughs> it is, it is. It's plenty of money. It's a lot of, it's a lot of money. It's a lot. Um, but you, ha you, know, you have a lot of money. You're an heiress. So can we just talk a little bit about what drives you? Like, when, when you were a kid, did you have any little lessons at home that you had to work? Or? Well, I think it's no coincidence that both my adult brothers and I are all in the business. And I think some of that is by watching my father and, and my mother, to some degree, come home every day just genuinely excited and passionate about what they were doing.